So let's continue with the part about installing EasyBuild, which is the next part in the tutorial here. So here I will be doing some hands-on in the prepared environment we have in AWS. So uh, be ready to jump into the terminal and execute some commands there. Before I do this, um, I will explain some of the requirements we have for EasyBuild and the different installation methods that we support. And then at the end, we'll actually have a short exercise um, and make sure you can get EasyBuild installed in the tutorial environment. So don't um, run ahead of yourself and try to install it already. Please wait until the end of this part, until we get to the exercise. So what does EasyBuild require? Um, it requires a Linux um, operating system. So that's the main target platform for EasyBuild. Um, since we're heavily focusing on HPC systems and installing software for HPC, um, this is our main platform, our main target platform. Uh, up to some sense, EasyBuild is also compatible with Mac OS. So the, the framework itself will certainly work on Mac OS, um, but you will not find a lot of easy config files for software that installs on Mac OS out of the box. So you will run into some trouble there if you want to make software installations with EasyBuild on Mac OS. It's not our main target platform. We need a particular version of Python. Um, so it says here Python 2.7, Python 2.6 will still work. If you're in an old CentOS version, for example, you can still get away with that for now, but the support for 2.6 has been deprecated. Um, any Python version, any Python 3 version over 3.5 should work as well. So if we check in the AWS environment here, we will see we have both Python 2 and Python 3 installed. The Python 3 is a 3.6, so that should be good enough for easy build. And this is the version that we will be using um, in this tutorial as well. Next to Python, we also need an environment modules tool. So this is a strict requirement for easy build. You can, currently cannot use easy build without having an environment modules tool. So the default one that is being used by easy build um, is Elmond, which is an, a Lua based implementation of the modules, uh, the environment modules tool. Um, which is a replacement for the more traditional original tickle based implementation. So Elmod has seen wide adoption in the HPC community recently, and it has become the default modules tool in EasyBuild. To check if you have a modules tool installed, you can run module-version. So let's copy this command here and paste it in the AWS environment in the container image, and we should see we have the Lua-based implementation, which is LMOT, and the particular version, which is recent enough for easy build. So any version um, over LMOT 7 should be good enough for easy build. It doesn't need a very, very uh, recent implementation. If you see something else as output here, something that says version equals 3.2.10 or modules release 4.x something, you have a tickle-based implementation of the modules tool, which will also work with easy build but then you will need to configure EasyBuild to make sure it picks up on this modules tool. So during this tutorial, we will focus on LMOD, which is the default modules tool that EasyBuild expects. Then looking at EasyBuild itself. So EasyBuild is in some sense a standard Python package. Um, so you can easily install it with the standard Python tools like pip, virtual env, setup tools, all these different um, standard Python tools that you have. So XKCD did a very good cartoon on this. Um, so if you're playing around with lots of Python software, it will look a little bit like this. And of course, for this tutorial, we will try to um, avoid that. One thing to keep in mind when installing EasyBuild is whether you want to run it on, on Python 2 or Python 3. So in CentOS 7, for example, it's very easy to have both two, Python 2 and Python 3 available, like we also have here in the container image. So that's something we need to pay a little bit of attention to. Since Python 2 is um, no longer um, supported officially, we will use Python 3 in this case. So that's something to keep in mind. We will make sure that we use Python 3 when installing EasyBuild. There's two main ways for installing EasyBuild, so, or at least two recommended ways. 
um, you can use the standard pip tool to install Python packages, where, where you go pip install, maybe you give it a location where the, the package should be installed and the name of the package. That's a pretty, uh, I hope, well-known installation procedure. And this is explained here in detail in this part of the tutorial. It basically boils down to pip install easy build, but as you will see, if you try this in the container image, you will see that pip is not available yet. So that's a little bit annoying. Um, if we would install easy build like this, we would also end up with, and I'm not sure if pip version will, yeah, yeah, it's not there, it's not gonna tell me much. Um, but if it will be there, we will be installing easy build for Python 2 in this case, which is not what we want. We want to run easy build on top of Python 3 um, and make sure that things will work out well. This gives you a bunch of options here. So um, if you do it like this, you may be installing in a system location where you may not have the rights to. In that case, you may want to use sudo pip install. If you don't have administrator rights, you can try pip install dash dash user, or you can try pip install dash dash prefix to install in a specific directory. Now, since we don't have pip here, uh, we're a little bit stuck. Um, but as you may know, there's also a Python 3 a variety of the pip command, which is pip3. And this will actually install software using uh, Python 3 rather than Python 2. So this is what we will be using here um, in this case. After installing easy build with pip, you may have to, or you will have to update your environment. So um, whether you, or at least when you use the dash dash user or dash dash prefix, prefix option, you'll have to update your environment. Um, you have to make sure that the eb command, which is part of the easy build installation, is available through your dollar path environment variable. So you will have to update the path variable with the specific prefix where easy build was installed. Um, and either you, this is a directory you specify to dash dash prefix, or if you were using dash dash user, you would have to use dollar home dot local slash bin here in this command. So keep that in mind. And then next to the path variable, you may also have to update the Python path variable. This is actually only needed when you did pip install dash dash prefix. If you picked the installation where easy build should be installed yourself, then you also have to update Python path. If you used dash dash user, pip install dash dash user, um, you don't actually have to update Python path. You can, but you don't have to because Python will um, look for Python packages in home.local automatically. So you don't have to tell it to look there by updating Python path. So keep in mind when you do pip install dash dash user or dash dash prefix, you also have to update your path and Python path, Python path variables to make sure that easy build is actually found uh, by Python. And then depending on whether you are using the standard Python installation, so here, in the AWS environment, our standard Python is still Python 2. While we actually want to use Python 3. So by default, EasyBuild will use the standard Python command, the eb command that is part of the EasyBuild installation will use the standard Python command and just assume that will work. If that doesn't work, um, as will be the case here, we will have to tell EasyBuild which Python commands to use. For this, we can set the EB Python environment variable. So since we will be installing EasyBuild with Python 3, this is exactly what we'll have to do. We'll have to tell EasyBuild to use the Python 3 command to run EasyBuild. And if you want to get more information about the, the Python commands that EasyBuild is considering, we can set the EB verbose environment variable whenever we run the EB command. And this will tell us which Python commands it's considering, which version it found for this Python command, and whether that meets the version requirements set by EasyBuild or not. So that's the first uh, way with pip install, which as you can tell is already a little bit messy. So it's not just pip install, but we may have to, uh, or we will have to update um, our environment a little bit as well for this to work. Because installing Python packages is so messy, we actually came up with our own installation mechanism in EasyBuild, which we call the bootstrap mechanism. So this is the second method that you can use. Um, this has some advantages. So 
we provide a script for you, a bootstrap script that you can just run to install EasyBuild. And behind the scenes, this will actually first install EasyBuild to a temporary location, and then use this temporary installation of EasyBuild to install EasyBuild itself. So it will install EasyBuild with EasyBuild, basically. Um, because of that, um, because EasyBuild is installed with EasyBuild itself, we will get a module file for EasyBuild. So we can just run module load EasyBuild afterwards, which is a nice bonus. So let me do that here first. So the first step is downloading the bootstrap script. Let me show you how that works in the AWS environment. So we download and we're already running into problems. Nice. We download the bootstrap script like this. Okay. Um, then we have to run it with a particular Python command and a prefix where EasyBuild should be installed. So in this case, we want to make sure it's using Python 3. So we use the Python 3 command. And we give it the prefix where EasyBuild should be installed. Based on the previous command that failed, this may, may actually not go too well. Let's see how this goes. So in the background, the bootstrap script is now first installing EasyBuild in a temporary location as it's telling you here. So this will take a little while. And then if this goes well, it will do a stage two um, where it will install EasyBuild with EasyBuild, which should give us a module that we can load. This, and as I was expecting, this is failing, which is a bit surprising to me. Okay, let me just change it to a different location. So you may be seeing the same problem. I'm not sure why the home directory is not writable, um, but we can just use slash TMP, for example, rather than dollar home, and that should make it hopefully work. I was going to say the syntax error you see popping up here, that's safe to ignore. Um, there's a small part in EasyBuild that's Python 2 specific, but this will only be used when EasyBuild is run with Python 2. When it's run with Python 3, it will use a different part. Um, so this part, this syntax error you may see popping up during the bootstrap is safe to ignore this one. So now I did the stage one installation, a temporary installation of EasyBuild, and it uses this to install EasyBuild in the location we specified. This gives us a whole bunch of output. Um, it says the bootstrap was completed, so this looked good. Um, it was installed into slash temp slash EasyBuild which also makes sense. Um, and here it's telling us to first make sure that module path includes this location, um, which basically corresponds to this module use command. So we have to tell the modules tool where we have installed modules before we can load them. So let's do that. Let's do module use temp easy build. This is the, maybe do an LS first to show you what's there. This is where we installed, or this is the location we gave to the bootstrap script to install EasyBuild. Um, we can see modules in there, and there's a subdirectory modules all, which seems to have a module for EasyBuild available. So we can use modules, module use, temp, EasyBuild, modules all. And if we now check with module avail, which is how we can check for available modules. Uh, we see the easy build installation available, which means we can load it. We can do module load, easy build. As is mentioned here in the tutorial. And then we can see whether it actually works. So a very simple way is checking the version. If we run eb dash dash version, we should get easy build for the 2.1. That worked well. So this gives us an easy build installation we can play around with. Uh, we have this installed as a module, which is useful in some ways, but also a bit annoying in other ways. So if we use an easy build installation installed as a module, we will run into some confusion later uh, because every now and then we will run a module purge, which unloads. So module purge, which unloads all the loaded modules, which means we'll also lose our easy build installation. So that's a bit annoying. 
Um, that's why we recommend to use this the first method to use pip install or actually pip3 install um, to do the installation. And this verifying the installation is a number of uh, eb commands that you can run. You can run eb dash version, um, eb dash help. To get the help output of the eb command, we can check the current configuration of easybuild with the show config command, or we can collect some basic system information with eb show system info. So let me do that before we go to the exercises. So let's load back the easybuild module. And let's, for example, run show config. So this shows us uh, the current configuration of easybuild, which is everything or almost everything in home.local. Um, and the Ds tell us that this is the default configuration. We will get back to configuring easybuild in the next part of the tutorial. So it's okay to leave this as default for now. Uh, we can also run, let me copy paste it, EV show system info, which will tell us some basic information about our system, basic information about our CPU, that it's a Skylake, apparently that we're getting on AWS. And it will also tell us which Python version is being used. Now I mentioned the EB Python environment variable. This is actually set automatically by the module uh, that was generated by EasyBuild. So EasyBuild noticed that it was being installed with Python 3. So it knows that it should also set the EB Python uh, environment variable in the module file. If we purge, remember we have an easy build module loaded. If we purge all the modules, we lose the easy build module and the EB Python variable will also no longer be set. So that shows it's actually set by the module file. Once we have a working easy build installation, we can very easily update um, easy build by running the install latest EB release command. So this will um, figure out the latest version that is available of easy build and install it and generate a module file for it. So this is a separate installation entirely. It will not affect the easy build version you are using to install the latest easy build version. It's an entirely separate installation. You will get a separate module file for it. So that brings us to uh, the exercise. So here it tells you install easy build in your home directory. As, as I noticed, there's some permission issues. Um, so maybe change this to install easy build and slash TMP. So it doesn't matter too much. So rather than using dollar home, use slash TMP home um, instead. And the recommendation here is um, to either use pip or the bootstrap. I already showed the bootstrap. So I recommend you to uh, try the installation with pip and make sure you get a working easy build installation. So spend a couple of minutes maybe on this um, and try not to peek at the solutions before actually getting it to work yourself. Kenneth, do you mind me chiming in? Sure, go ahead, Christian. You, you created the, the working directory um, outside of the container with your user on the, on the EC2 machine and within the container, you have a different UID. So I, I post something in the, in the Slack chat to mitigate this. We just need to use the user ID that's outside of the container. So just add what I pasted in the tutorial Slack and then you're good to go. So I need, it's just this dash dash user part. Yeah. ID minus you mapped to. So this first one gives you and you, you, you lack user ID and oh, group ID. Yes, and that's it. This just maps the user we're using outside into the container. And then okay. you have the, the right to write in the, I mean, you don't have a username, but that's yeah. okay. Okay. So if you do, who am I? Then it will say, I don't have a user. Yeah, so this part, I guess this is also shared with the people attending um, or maybe somebody can fix it in the practical information in the tutorial, so it just needs a refresh for people attending. So this mapping is required to make sure the home directory is mountable. 
Thank you for the help, Christian. Um, so let me do the bootstrap again, as it was intended to work. Or I guess, the, oh, okay, not here. So download the bootstrap script to Python 3 bootstrap. And now it should work in our home directory without too much trouble. So as long as you do this mapping here, you can do the exercise as is mentioned in the tutorial to install easy build in your home directory. This mapping is required to make sure the home directory is writable. Again, stage one. Did I overlook something here, Christian? Okay, uh, so the user ID 501 doesn't exist, so. Um, okay, well, I think it's fine as long as people um actually a, a nasty trick would be doing this right yeah either this or you create the user with the user id within the container or you create a user on the host with the user id and group id of yeah. the user with i think that a very easy workaround is just doing this in the container image you just redefine home to be in a temporary directory and then it should work fine so okay assuming the directory is there. I'm sorry about this issue. We haven't hit this when we were preparing the tutorial, so I'm a bit confused why it pops up now. Um, but wherever it says dollar home in the exercises or in the hands-on, you can just replace it by uh, a directory in slash temp and it should work fine. So EasyBuild doesn't um, require things to be in dollar home itself too much. It does complicate the pip installation a little bit, but keep in mind, yeah, this is not working well. I don't think the mapping is a good idea. Maybe forget about the, the home directories in the container and just don't use them. Yeah, but if I do the mapping, I'm, I'm still running into problems. So this is probably what people should be using. It's a bit nasty redefining home, that should work. That's fun with containers for you, even though we haven't hit this issue during extensive testing, um, we're hitting it now, but it's relatively easy to work around. Oh, and there's an easier, easier fix in the Slack channel, like change mod to the EasyBuild tutorial directory outside of the container should work as well. Okay, that's another option. So this directory Like this. And then I guess we can try again. Uh, don't have anything here. So meanwhile, I hope most people have figured out um, this issue in their setup. I'm seeing people are not hitting it when running Docker locally. That's how I mostly tested the Docker container, even though I also tested in AWS. Um, so if you're not hitting it, you can just ignore the workaround that's being proposed. But this indeed seems to work. So the chmod 1777 of the directory we created outside of the container image that seems to be doing the trick. 
So now we have a bootstrapped installation in our home directory. So remember, this is not the way we recommend for the tutorial. We highly recommend using pip, pip3 um, to install easy build because that will cause us a little bit less issues for the rest of the tutorial. So we're running behind a little bit on schedule. Let me go ahead and purge this and just jump to the um, solved exercise. So the bootstrapping we already showed, you download the bootstrap script, you run it with Python 3, bootstrap ev.py dollar home easy build. And after a two-stage two bootstrap process, um, that should be working okay. And you can do module use, you can load the easy build module and you can run EB dash version and the dollar EB Python should be set for you automatically. What we recommend is using pip3 install instead. So we basically need to run pip3 install dash dash user easy build. And we have to make sure we set the path to include dot local slash bin. And we also have to tell easy build to use Python 3. So let's try this. It doesn't matter whether you define the environment variables first or first to the installation. Let's do the installation first. In this case, so this should pull down easy build from the Python package index. You can see it's split into three parts, framework, easy blocks, easy configs. And this does the installation, which includes a whole bunch of files. The installation was successful. If we don't have a module loaded, we don't have the eb command yet, however, um, until we run the path command, uh, the, until we update the path environment variable, that gives us the eb command. Um, that doesn't work yet because it's still using the standard Python, but if we do the eb Python export to tell it to use Python 3, this should work as a job. So we did a pip3 install dash dash user easy build and we've updated two environment variables that gives us a working Python installation in our home directory. So this is the recommended way to install easy build for this tutorial. I also mentioned this in the slides. So pip3 install dash dash user easy build and export these two environment variables with the correct values. And that should give you a working easy build installation. 